finally, when I drink this elixir, I will purge the darkness from within myself. I will no longer desire to be a woman. Well, that's certainly the last time I let a scarecrow pick out a recipe on Pinterest. Well, it is a woman's world after all, and I certainly do feel like a woman. Scarecrow! Wake up, sleepyheads. I'm the Sandman. And I'm Scarecrow. And we're all rated. Thanks for joining us once again on Keeping It Real as we count down 13 weeks to Halloween. Today, we're going to be reviewing Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So far, we have watched Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and The Mummy. This is actually one of his favorites, and honestly, it's probably one of mine now. So guys, let's get right into the video. <sighs> So today, as Scarecrow said, we're going to be reviewing Dr. Jekyll, not Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, the 1931 Paramount version. There have been quite a few versions of this made, but this is the one closely. Uh, it came out around the same time as, you know, some of the Universal Horrors. Uh, it's about dual personality, much like the Wolfman, where a man struggles with his inner demons. You know, try, try, he wants yeah. to get rid of the evil within, not just himself, of everyone, yeah. but he experiments on himself. And... Things kind of don't go the way they should. He does uh, release the the monster within, yeah. and uh, he runs rampant on the on the city. It doesn't really say where it is. Is it London? No, I, I don't think it does. Like maybe because at one time it does show like a newspaper. If you pay close attention, I think it may say what it is. But I I wasn't that much into it. I don't think I really pay that much attention to it either. But uh. Uh, Mr. Hyde is the alter ego, and he does uh, cause a lot of chaos. Yeah. Uh, he spends the doctor's money, uh, tries to uh, get a girl to fall in love with him. That doesn't go quite so well either because he's very hideous. I don't know if you <laughs> saw any Dr. Jekylls, but this one is more like a uh, caveman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very, very ugly. The, the same actor portrays both Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Does a very good job of both, I, I believe. Yeah, he actually got uglier as it went on. He really did. Like he was, I guess like, like he was getting stronger. He was devolving, yeah. yeah and you know, if you noticed, also, uh, he kind of was Dr. I mean, Mr. Hyde was taking over more and more and yeah, more. Yeah, he was. To me, you know what this reminds me of? A lot of people know it today is the Hulk. Like, was this before? Now, this the was before the hook, and there have been some references where Stan, May, uh, Stan Lee, you know, once or twice said that this did kind of influence the hook. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I've i loved this kind of stuff since, like, Looney Tunes. They did their own version of Dr. Jake or Mr. Hyde, and it was fantastic. Yeah, I, I've tried to find that, and I cannot find it. I think you may be able to find, like, one poor version on YouTube now to watch. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's basically the same thing. You have a mild-mannered doctor. Uh, the one in this movie, it's by Paramount, as I said, not universal. He's a good man. He does a lot of charity work, uh, free surgeries for people, you know, free surgeries. I mean, yeah. a good guy helps out a, a girl who falls and later on becomes the, spoiler, victim of Mr. Hyde. But, you yeah. know, he's all about good. He, he's he's about to get married. He's in love with, uh, I, forget, uh, I know it starts with the M. I was going to use it before. I cannot remember her name. Courage and Cowardly Dog. Uh, Mariam? Muriel, Muriel. Muriel, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's his uh, bride to be soon, his fiance, And because of the Mr. Hyde thing, you know, the Mr. Hyde takes over while she's gone with her father on vacation. He, yeah. he lets him go. He gets bored. He's mad because he couldn't get married before she left. And he goes there. He goes, you know, spends the money. He goes out drinking. He starts fights. I mean, he threatens to kill people. He takes this poor girl. I, I don't remember her name. Oh, wait. Ivy. Ivy, yeah. Ivy, I remember the song, Ivy. Yeah, Champagne Ivy. I'm Champagne Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Champagne Ivy, yeah. That's my so, name. Something Playing like, pokers, that's my name. Or something something, like, something yeah. like that. But uh, anyhow, uh, uh, Dr. Jekyll, he helps her earlier on. 
Yeah. And then later on, Mr. Hyde, he has a thing for her, and he, he tracks her down, which is weird. And, you know, she should know that. Yeah. But he says he has money. He says, I know I'm not a good looker, but I do have money. I'm not a gentleman, but I have money. And some time skips why. Uh, yeah, definitely. Quite a bit of time. Yeah, because, I mean, she. They have a place now. They're already expecting rent. Mm-hmm. And then we don't know if it's the first month. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. Because the the landlady, you know, seems to know everything's going on. She's being abused. Uh, yeah. She's being terrified. She's too afraid to run away or go to the cops. Yeah. I mean, he just, I mean, it, we don't know what else he's doing in the movie. It doesn't show a lot more. But we do know that he is doing, you know, a lot more because yeah. of, the, of all the times that's going on. He's not just abusing her. Yeah, he, he's taking up the persona and giving, giving a backstory to Mr. Hyde. He's now in person. Yeah. He pays rent. He has, a, am assuming, a wife now. I don't know if they're married or if they're just living together. Well, she's afraid to leave. She's afraid to leave, afraid to call the cops, yeah. afraid to do anything. Yeah, better like an abused wife. Once she even says that, you know, I tried to drown myself. Yeah. But she does want to leave, you know. She's yeah, she does. She, she she wants to escape him. She even says once, I hope he does kill me. She, she wants to be rid of him one way or another. Yeah. But she can't bring herself to take her own life. They actually did a great job with her. The whole time I was like, man, I hope everything turns out great for her. But I, I'd already read the book and watched the movie before. so. But that brings us to our next part. She did go for to Dr. Jackal for help. And then he's unable to control the change now. Mr. Hyde is now coming at will, pretty mm-hmm, much. Mm-hmm. And he's and, actually take, have, actually having to come up with ways to transform back into Mr. Hyde to yeah, Mr. Uh, or Dr. Jekyll. Uh, Dr. Jekyll to avoid the, lo- yeah. avoid the law for different things he's done. Yeah. And he comes and kills her. Mm-hmm. Ivy. Strangles her. Not his fiance, who still has finally come back into the country with her dad. And this is... This is an hour and 40 minutes, and this is starting to finally wind up. Dr. Jackal has finally killed somebody, or Mr. Hyde. So we're getting a switch now. Yeah, fine. Mr. Hyde uh, is now wanted for these crimes. He comes out to his friend. You know, okay, he's wanted to get out of town. His friend's not going to let him because, once again, he's Mr. Hyde. He's not Dr. Jekyll. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, he's not doing it to him. He's like, show me, you know, why? Just drink it. Where is Dr. Jekyll? Yeah, he, he thinks he's dead. He thinks yeah. that this Mr. Hyde, who he doesn't know, has done something to uh, Dr. Jekyll. Yeah. So he wants him to show him. Before he lets him leave, Mr. Hyde comes to take the uh, the uh, elixir. Mm-hmm. He wants to go out and turn back into uh, Dr. Jekyll, and his, his friend will not let him. You know, He says, yeah. take it here. He says, I want to know if, if Dr. Jekyll is safe. So he takes it in front of him, transforms back into uh, Dr. Jekyll, yeah. which is, as we talked about, this was 10 years before the Wolfman. Yeah. And the transformation at first was uh, superior to the Wolfman. Yeah, there's like cuts. It's kind of crazy. Like, it doesn't look like it's a different cut. At first, it's like, not. They did it with a, a green, uh, I think, green glass. That somehow, they make it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. They like, you know, how in school they had those projectors. It was like a glass and the light would mm-hmm. hit and the picture would be on yeah. the wall. At first, that, when he actually starts to change colors without cutting. Later on, you can tell he cuts like the Wolfman. Yeah. The, the time frame thing, but at first, oh, yeah, they have like that's a such a time. great idea. Like, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I mean, that's how he did back then. You know, since we we're talking about that, yeah, maybe we should go to a fun fact. All right, guys, take it away. The nineteen thirty one version of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde was the first horror film ever to win an Academy Award, and although there would be nearly fifty versions of the Stevenson's classic tale made. It was the only one to pronounce Jekyll's name correctly as G. Cow. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was a huge success for the then-struggling Paramount Pictures and was one of the top-grossing American films of the 1931. Even while going up against Universal's Dracula, which would come out later that month, and Frankenstein, which would come out later that year. That was a fun fact. Brought to you by your friends from R-Rated. So, like, like we were saying, this was 10 years before Wolfman. The transformation was amazing. Well, it did, and, you know, the thing, too, it, this is from Paramount. Yeah. Paramount was struggling at the time. This was a huge movie for them, a huge success. Like, yeah. I think it was number eight of the year, in box office. And that's the same year that Dracula and Frankenstein came yeah, out. Yeah, both of them. So, I mean, and you could tell, too, with the production, either even though that Frankenstein and Dracula were successes... It seems yeah. like they put more effort into this. It yeah. was much longer. It seemed like they had a bigger budget. 
a, a much bigger budget. Like there's their scenery. You can tell was the real deal. The real. Yeah, I was going to yeah. point that. Out. I love the 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 glasses, the matte glass. I love those scenes in, in Dracula and Frankenstein. My favorite parts of them. But this, you know, you tell us cheaper. Say, okay, we're just going to paint a glass and do this. Here, yeah. they actually, I don't know if they went on the street somewhere and actually filmed it or built yeah. a set for it. So you get, like, these 1930s streets, mm -hmm. which looks really cool, like what you were saying, Oliver Twist. Exactly. I thought of Oliver my, Twist. One when, of my when favorite. a girl comes walking through there, oh, well, thank you, sir, I can walk. Yeah, one of my favorite movies, Oliver Twist. When we watched it in school, I fell in love with it. I have that also. It reminded me of, like, a... <laughs> well, Sweeney, that a we'll review that at Christmas yeah, time. Yeah, that and Sweeney Todd. Love Sweeney Todd. Uh, yeah. It took me, like, three years to get to watch it. Yeah, we watched most of it in school. And I was so upset that we didn't finish it. I went and watched it. Yeah, it took me forever. Um, it's got a great cast. The thing we were talking about in the 1930s also. Yeah. Uh, there was something that you you brought to my mind. Oh, the, the weird things they did. It was it was unique. It was it was breaking edge were the camera angles. Not not the switch. It would show like a half screen here and a half screen there. And then yeah. the switch over. It would show, what, it would show say like you're seeing here, you're seeing uh, Dr. Jekyll. And then here you'll see Ivy. He'll show Dr. Jekyll. And then a switch up. And you'll see yeah. Ivy and then switch on over. But it starts out with... First person point of view. You're, you're seeing everything through yeah. the eyes of Doctor Jekyll. It lasts maybe three minutes. Not a very long time, but you know it's a, it's a very nice effect to start out. Yeah, like it does it a few times later, but never with the uh, of the brim of the eyes. And how about the close-ups? When, when when someone's talking, you can see them from a side angle. Yeah. And then it would just zoom in. It's like the camera is this close to their face. Yeah, like and it's like a real funny angle. They was doing like a romantic scene. They was like this. Yeah, they were like this close. Yeah, really. They were just talking. And the whole they, time. they never looked anywhere. You know, when you're speaking to someone, I noticed this that when you're speaking to someone, you look at their mouth sometimes, yeah. their eyes. They just However, they did it like eyes. yeah, three to five minutes, just stared at one another's <laughs> eyes, did not move. Yeah. That was impressive. Yeah. This was a different kind of writing style too than we talked about with Universal it's more of a poetic type and yeah and, and kind of more serious like you had the overacting with the Universal movies every one of them had some kind of overacting or just some character that was not well done this boring characters this didn't yeah. really have any boring yeah. characters that were not you necessary had the fool but he, he still had some kind of uh, charisma to him uh, you know he actually played the part well the only plan I had, they really overused the word sir. They, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm walking, sir. I'm walking, sir. I'm walking, sir. They did do that. But, yeah, I mean, the characters, the, the only, I mean, you had, um, I'm, I keep forgetting her name again. But Ivy? You, no, I know her. Uh, name. I want to say Matilda. It's close to that. Uh, <laughs> Courage and Curdy Dogs, Grant the old lady, take care of me. Comment down below, guys, if you're still Miguel. watching. <laughs> what, what the woman's name is. Mugle. Mur Muriel. Mur Muriel. Muriel, yeah. Muriel. Okay, so you had Dr. Jekyll, who had the same actor who played Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He asked me if it was the same actor. The, the, the makeup was so great. Yeah, yeah, like you don't even tell it's the same person. Yeah, and then you had Ivy. She was a main player, a, a main star, but she did have more screen time than Muriel. Yeah. And she was not boring. You had Muriel, who was only in a few scenes when Dr. Jekyll was in. Her father wasn't in it much. Uh, I thought Ivy was much better than Muriel. Much, much better. She was in it much more, obviously. But her character, Muriel was the, oh, my man can do no wrong, no matter what, I love him. Muriel's like, you're handsome. Yeah, you know, she was coquette. Some She's a little bitty coquette. Yeah. Uh, coquettish. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you know, too, you can compare her characters to the ones in, in uh, Dracula, Dracula and the Mummy and Frankenstein. And Frankenstein. Yeah. She was a much better female character. The and only other had, female character I had was in The Wolfman. She actually fought off uh, Mr. Hyde, too. She took, tried to. Tried to, yeah. yeah she did. I mean, this she guy tried. took on like eight tops later. So. Yeah, he was getting everywhere. Yeah, he was like yeah. a monkey. So, uh, but I mean, how did you feel about the movie? I mean, did, I did, this is it. the first time you watched it. It's, he's watching yeah, all this, these for the first time. So this is my my reaction to it. I loved it. Like, like I said, Dracula is my favorite. Then this, which it might be above Dracula. I, just, I, I thought it's a hard like toss up. It, it, uh, the extra time does help to develop the characters, and you get more invested in the characters. Like, um, the fact that Mr. Hyde talked, and he had quite a few roles, he was a much better villain than Dracula. I think we saw Mr. Hyde more the than The actor was better. Jekyll. First of all, he, he could, you know, he could actually act. And he was athletic. He could, yeah, he was athletic. He was making jumps, like, insane. Really? Like, he would jump from a chair. I wonder if they had a trampoline on that, because that was a good jump. Oh man, that'd be cool. But even off of the him, and he jumped back yeah. down, and it, all the clank, swinging and yeah. jumping. And... He, he was very athletic. And mm -hmm. later on, outside, 
he jumped on that guy's back. Yeah, I mean, he was he was yeah. all over the place. Like, looked, the looked like a little caveman, acting like a yeah. monkey. That's something we've not seen. Wolfman, you would think to be the agile one. <laughs> Mr. Howe is much more <laughs> agile. You got to count the actor. That, that they yeah. got this. You know, this actor here is himself much much more athletic. Yeah. You look at Lon Chaney Jr. He's not his father. <laughs> he's not a little guy. You know, he, he just he's not an action star. You can tell yeah. he's not going to jump. He's like his vertical leap is much like mine. You're like two inches. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's the max, but you did love the movie. Yeah, overall, to me, I can't think of one bad thing besides the you know the overuse of the word sir. Um, everything that I felt they was getting upset about, I would have been upset about. Like, come on, let me marry your daughter. Don't make me wait eight months yeah, to your anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then he saw the bird be eaten by a cat. That upsetting. upsetting. Yeah, so it seemed real. Yeah, something uh, we would really react to. Yeah, and it seemed... I'd ask what a struggle between somebody in their inner uh, caveman, I guess you would say, the guy who who doesn't obey the laws, who just works for his flesh. I, you know, I want women. I got money. I want to spend that money on women. Yeah, if you if you're following Doctor Freud Hill, you here you'd have the ego, the id, and the super ego. This guy's completely uh, devoid of the id and the super ego. It's just yeah. like, his ego has control, and he wants what he wants, and he takes it. Yeah. You actually can see Mr. Hyde before he drinks the serum for the first time. Because he's like, oh, when, when he first meets the prostitute lady, he, he wants to go back up there. You can tell. Yeah, he does, yeah. So you can see that. He, do, he does let her kiss him. And yeah. if you're finding someone off the kiss, you know, you're not going to sit there that long and doing it. And he even yeah. says that, of course I like that. And he says, wouldn't you? Yeah. And his friend's like, you know, you're acting like barbarous. Like, don't talk to me like that. Yeah, he actually starts changing. You know, yeah. like you spoke up that like before he even drinks the elixir, like he was in this this hospital. He was doing, he was missing dinner. You know, prior engagements with his fiance and stuff, and yeah. trying to impress her dad just so he could do this this charity work, the surgery on this uh, lady who could not even pay him. He didn't want to trust her to the other surgeons because she feared for her life. He just helped this little girl. You know, it's making him look how generous he was. Everyone knew him. Talked about how great he was. He did a lecture, but then it's like you know he does this through the daytime but at night. He starts switching before he even drinks the, the yeah. elixir. And even after he does drink the elixir, like he's, like we said, for maybe months, he's over here abusing this woman, and he does nothing to stop it. Yeah, he, do, he doesn't try to, you know, uh, stop the hides from coming out. Like, yeah. He gets bored, he's sitting outside, and it's going to be another month before Muriel comes back. And just because he's bored, I mean, he turns back into, you know, Mr. Hyde, knowing yeah. what's going to happen to this girl. And he, it, the way she talked, he was talking to her, he's like, you don't know when I'm going to come back. Yeah, because apparently he stays gone for a while. But to recompense all this, he's like, "Here's fifty pounds." Yeah, that's what Doctor Jekyll later yeah. sends her fifty pounds. Fifty pounds, and he's he's abused, abused her arms, whipped her. Remember she talked about her whip? back? Yeah, and she said in places that she can't show him. Mm-hmm. So there's been a lot more. The only thing we actually see on screen is a bru a bruise here, a couple on the arm. But and she talks about the we don't see the whips. I guess they couldn't do the makeup yeah. or didn't want to show that in the day. But that's only what. We could see, and they spoke about. It. She says yeah. that much more. And Doctor Jekyll was not the good guy. No, this. and not not to, not to mention the the mental abuse. Yeah, you seen how distraught she was every time he'd come around, and he would talk about this, and she would try to he would she would have to force a smile, and you could tell it was not yeah. there, and she would cry. And yeah, so guys, I just said I think you should go and watch this. Out of ten, I think I'd give this like an eight. It is really good. I'm kind of not wanting to give it a wet dream rating. Because I have that for Frankenstein, but it's, I mean you it, could reuse. I, I could because we're going to be. Well, you're going to have to. Yeah, you're going to have to reuse yeah. eventually. I do like it. I'm just going to give it a sleeping on cloud nine, floating on cloud nine, just one below Frankenstein because we also have Nosferatu coming up. Yeah, we have the Phantom of the Opera. One of my yeah. other favorites. Dorian Gray. Well, yeah, that's not one of my... I actually have not watched this one myself, this version of it. Oh. I have not watched the old version of this one myself. Well, that's... So I don't know if I like that. But we also have Creature from Black Lagoon. And then all kinds of other Halloween movies to come. So guys, make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Comment down below if you're enjoying the videos. And if you like the changes that we make each episode, I think we're improving. Definitely. Uh, hit that like button. Subscribe. Hit that bell so you when the first ones know exactly when we upload and guys, this is Keeping It Real, so let's keep it real. See you in your dreams.